Hello and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. This is episode number 36 at shampooandbooze.com. That is our blog. <laughs> we had someone comment on uh, our YouTube. Uh, <laughs> Asking post. us what our blog was. Yeah, so. And we say it every time. It's all right. Um, okay, so it has been, we haven't done a podcast in two weeks, uh, but it's been a very eventful Yes. Two weeks, so we have a lot to talk about. Uh, let's get some of the kind of, you know... General s- items. Stuff out of the way. Number one is, uh, so we noticed that Airbnb... I don't know if I just noticed this or if it's always been there, but mm-hmm. Airbnb now has this co- thing called smart pricing. Okay. Where before it was like you could say, click on a button and it would show you on your calendar what they say it, you should put th- the prices at. Okay, they would give you price suggestions. Yes. Yeah. But now they have a thing called smart pricing where you can actually kind of program it where if you choose how often you want to to be booked. Like I want to always be booked a little bit or whatever. And then you can put it your lowest price of what you're willing to uh, rent it for. Mm. Then Airbnb dynamically changes it, I guess. I don't know if it's day to day or if they're doing it all throughout the day. Interesting. You know, based on... I don't know where they're getting their numbers. I would think it's based on who's looking in your area and how many people. Like, there's got to be some kind of algorithm with where people are searching. Right. So, you know, I kind of looked at it, but if it's anything like their price, it's suggestions that they make, I, I kind of... I'm kind of not really into the idea because my concern is, is that they would dynamically change our prices towards the lowest price, you know? R- more like, often than not, Right, you think. like, uh, but I would love to hear if anyone is trying that, you know? Can you say, <laughs> like, only on weekdays or something? Like, I wonder if there's mm. a way to be, like, Monday through Thursday. It didn't look like you, it didn't look like they had that option. I mean, the two mm-hmm. things, the two things that you're able to, to, to tell it is how often you want to be booked. Gotcha. You know, and then number two, what your lowest price is. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, what you're willing to, to take. So I guess that's one way to put like a backstop. So I guess it, it, you could guarantee it would never be super low because right. it, you're telling them the minimum. How, how low. And honestly, I would say that they wouldn't always tend toward the lowest price because their fees depend on you getting paid more. You know what I mean? So you would think that they wouldn't be like, just the lowest of the low. Yeah. You know? So I'm not trying to, you know, poo poo uh, s- something that's already come out that I haven't actually tried, but I'd love to hear what other people say. I guess I like the way we have it where we have kind of firm prices on certain days of the week, you know, right. weekdays versus uh, weekends. It's more of, of a static way. Yeah. And then I do sometimes change prices. Like if we haven't booked something for later in the week, I'll put those days on cheaper just because it'd be great to book them. Yeah. I'd rather have a cheaper price. So I don't know. I would love to hear what people say. Yeah. Also, uh, a listener, uh, she's very nice. She emailed us or commented on the blog, uh, April. She pointed out how to find our transaction history. I had been complaining yes. about uh, that I couldn't find past information. Right. Uh, you know, like, why doesn't Airbnb uh, show me? Like as, last year, basically. Right. As long as I've been a member, it should have all the info. Well, she showed me exactly it's where it is. Hmm. So you go to, you know, Airbnb, you uh, log in, you go to your dashboard. Right. You go to stats, and then you go to transaction history. Where's stats? Is it up top? Yeah, it's in the, okay. the it's, it's navigation bar. And then, like, halfway down, there's a transaction history, and you click on that. Um, and then that shows you, it starts breaking the uh, numbers down. So you can find last year in there. And then what you do is then it, you can put in dates or a years and it, you can start uh, breaking it down and it spits out uh, a summary. It's for you. So we can actually see, you know, like how many people stayed in 2015. So it's like it's for us in 2015, which was our first year, we booked 129 nights. Now, what's interesting is we booked 129 nights on Airbnb, but VRBO, we had a bunch of nights too. So I would love to look there. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's one of the downfalls of, of using a multiple places to rent. But right, know. well, it's, 
Yeah, exactly. So, but they show you like the like Airbnb a uh, service fees. I mean, it's cool. Airbnb they charge us a uh, seven hundred nineteen dollars. You know, for 2015. Which That's it? That's the that whole much. year? Yeah. Dang. I know, right? It's kind of crazy. It's not bad. Uh, anyway, so that's very nice, April. Thank you for telling us Yes. about that. Uh, the other big piece of news for us these past two weeks is we finally found a cleaner. We found a cleaner that we liked. So, uh, Ryan, why don't you say how we found this okay. woman? Okay, so... How we did it was we actually went to the Chamber of Commerce and we asked for our business cards of cleaners that were part of the Chamber of Commerce. And that was Commerce. actually a good suggestion by someone else that commented yes. on the blog is if you go to either Chamber of Commerce or talk to people that hold events uh, locally, they would know who all the cleaners are. Because we were getting recommendations from other people um, and a lot of times those people were already busy. Like they already had enough work. Um so the cool thing was what we did was we met her and then we were like, okay, we like this person. Like the initial like first reaction was we liked her. She was inquisitive, asking questions. Uh, you know, she told us she used text messaging. We were like, great. Um, and the first time we really, really met with her was she cleaned the house with us. So that she could see how we did stuff. And that was actually our idea. Well, okay, so yeah. let's back up real quick. When we met her. So she's the third person that we had met and interviewed. Right. And she was the first person that actually gave us a price. Right. You know, we would say, how much? And the other people it would tell us, how much do, do you want to pay me? <laughs> it's you know, like, And it's like, mean? we hate that game. And she yeah. actually gave us a price. And she said it'd be $70, $70. Uh, yeah. for... You know, a three-bedroom house. Which is pretty much what we were thinking. That was our ballpark. Yeah. I mean, you know, know, it takes... It's her and someone else, and it takes them two-ish hours to clean. Yeah. And so I think it's... I think she's getting a very fair price. Right. And we feel good. And and it was our idea. uh, And again, we heard this from someone else on the blog that told us about this she says you have to train them so train them. have them clean with you right so they see how would you like things done right exactly and what was it like uh, she spent uh, most of the day with upstairs, you upstairs yeah um it was good at first i, I was really nervous because i was like uh is it gonna be weird like me showing someone how i clean and it the good thing about her is she didn't make it weird. She was just like, okay, how do you do this? How do you do this? What about that? Like, she's asking me, uh, what do you prefer for this? What right. What do you use for the cleaning? And do you want me to use your cleaning supplies versus my own? And, you know, we determined she would just use ours because we like the stuff we clean. Yeah. And actually, she liked it. She was like, I love all the stuff you use, so I'd rather use that. Because, I mean, you know, so she does clean other cabins in the area and... Unfortunately, we heard all the bad habits that these other cabins have. I mean, um, or the just lack like of things, things like they do. she was kind of amazed that we change out the, <laughs> the, the duvet uh, cover. It's a duvet cover Actually, every single time. She didn't know what a duvet cover was really. Right. She was just like, "I don't get what this is." I'm like, "It's just a cover on top of the blanket." She's like, "Oh, we just keep the blankets." And I said, "You clean the blankets every time?" No. Yeah. Oh, right. okay. I yeah. get it. <laughs> but, you know, she, we were like, this is what we do, and this is what we do every time. But the thing to take away is we just liked that she was she worked hard, which we like because we like to work hard. But she also uh, listened, and she and was willing to yeah. do it the way we wanted to yeah. do it, as well as bring ideas that made sense, you know, that, Absolutely. that, that we weren't doing. And right. so... After that one time, then we immediately said, well, why don't you come tomorrow and clean? It, w- it was perfect. Or Like two, two days, days later, yeah. And so she, her, and her, her helper mom, yeah. um, cleaned it themselves. Right. And uh, and then we actually went and uh, met her just to go over it. Right. Because then it was started. It, it was totally clean. It was in just talking about little details about where we like things to be yeah. put. And she had listened to that. Yeah. And I think it is a process, and and I have to remember, she literally has only been working at our house for a week. Right. I'm like, it feels like forever at this point. But um, we still have to be like, watch out for this thing. Just remember this thing. Because we have, like, I don't realize, 
we have like a million different little this goes here this goes right. here this 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 chair is angled like this like that's right. just how i like it in but the room important it's important us, yeah. the way it looks you yeah. know uh yeah and uh, and so, you know, everything that people were telling us, you know, is true, is that once you show someone how things are done, then they learn that certain way. And, then, and that's how they do it. And we're still kind of fine tuning things yeah. a little bit because there's a lot of stuff in the house that we like done. But at the same time, she wants to learn. To learn. She's cool. The, the, the thing that I really like about her is that any time we've been like, uh, we need it to be done like this. She's like, yep, perfect. Just tell me. Yeah. Because I need to know. Um, and yeah. so we actually took full advantage of it. So she's cleaned it uh, two more times, basically all week. And just like everyone said, it's bought us her time. And it is yeah. so nice to be able just to communicate with her. She goes over and cleans it. And then we've still been going over and meeting the, the people coming yeah. to rent. And then we go in and just kind of kind of just do a look over. Eyeball everything. But we get that whole day, and so we can spend the whole day doing our other business right. instead of like the cleaning, basically breaking up the day. The whole day, It yeah. kind of ruins the day in yeah, a way. Yeah, because the first part of your right. day is getting ready to do that, and right. the second part of the day you're exhausted, so you're And like, so it really is worth the so – we, so we charge $25 on Airbnb. It costs us 70 and so – or 75 now. Yeah. And so uh, we're still paying out of pocket, but – Yeah, for now. But um, we did raise our cleaning fee on Airbnb to thirty five yeah. for the new. Bookings. I'm sure there are people out there that say we'll just, <laughs> just charge <do> charge exactly <laughs> what it costs. I think you, we're but... working our way slowly yeah. to just help for it a little for bit. people that didn't want to charge anything for cleaning <laughs> because that's who we are. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's nice. But anyway, we 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 really appreciate everyone's. Advice. Advice has been huge. Uh, it's been good, you know. And uh, once we get this other a rental, it's going. It's going to be a necessity to have we someone have to have help cleaner. clean us. Yeah. So yeah. it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big. I'm a big fan. I, I love think. It. I think we were very nervous about. Okay, so here, here's part of it. My sister was visiting last weekend, so it was kind of essential to have her clean on her own because I was like, "What am I going to do? Be like, hey, welcome. Sorry, you gotta go." Like. So I kind of like didn't think about it. I was like, it's just got you just gotta trust this person and it's good. And uh it was a nice jumping off point where we were like, we just have to let go and be like right. they're cleaners. They know how to clean houses. And, like And I don't know if other people are like this is I mean, I guess you know, we're the kind of people that have these little small businesses and we like to do all the work. Like, we don't really like to hire other people yeah. to do it. Mainly because we like to, to, to do certain things ourselves. It saves us a money. You know, yeah. like, why pay someone to, to do something that I can do, just it, do it. It, it's myself? And I'm sure there are other people out there, businessy people, who are like, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't want to have to do anything. I right. have the ideas and then I just right. hire out all the work in... God bless those people. So we're trying to find a nice balance between those two things. Right. You know? So this is the first time we've really had someone yeah. who's like our helper. Because, you know, we find that if you're starting a business, you know, for us, it's been essential to keep costs low. And so yes. that means doing all the work ourselves. Yeah. So that means costs are super low. Right. And, you know, the a risk is less. And well, and all the, those things. the other part of it, too, is... You are perfecting how you do things. This is how it's done. It's done right every time. Right. Uh, hopefully you do it right every right. time. But, you know, you have it down to a science. You're just yeah. like, like with our other business, we're just like, right. this is how it's done. Oh, my God. What, I'd have to yeah. teach someone how to do this? I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, with the cleaning, it's more of a skill that people have. But, uh, yeah. So it's, um... it's, it's, it's about giving over... You know the the trust. You have to have trust in this person, and so right. far, sh it's felt good. I've not felt like, right. you know. And you know, it's it's even great too. Uh, we actually now pay her an extra five dollars, so it's seventy five dollars because right. she's willing to drive to our home, 
pick up all the clean sheets and towels, you know, go and clean the place and then bring everything back, back. over, all the dirty stuff, because yeah. we actually clean everything here at our house. Right. Uh, and so totally I mean, worth five bucks. Oh, there was one, uh, there was one person, the first person we interviewed was like, I'll do all the laundry, you know, but I don't know, like, it's so much extra time and organization that you're like, how much extra are you going to charge me for that when I'll just throw, I'll just, we'll just do the laundry, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. I don't know. That's like a whole other <laughs> discussion. But, yeah. So just to I'll wrap this up, I mean, I think the a reason why I like her is that number one, she uses text. Right. You know, text. It's messaging. That's so good. I don't have to like call her on the telephone or leave her phone. It's like, can you come or, over at this time? Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, it's done. Which is great. Um, and uh, she listened and was willing to uh, uh, learn, which is awesome. And she uh, and she also had like a. Uh, a uniform shirt that I think is really nice. <laughs> she like got her name on it and, and the name of her business. It's right, nice. right. She, she does seem to always wear it, but it's cool. It's just cute. She takes pride. Okay, so in our farmhouse, this is yes. what it's been like for the past uh, two weeks. So we've been fully booked back to this back. month. Yeah. It was great. Even some of the nights that were kind of in between, they got booked. I mean... Just last minute. There, there were a couple nights where... We would be like getting ready to have dinner and we'd see an instant book come through and we're like, that's tomorrow. Yeah, like, and, we, and we have it where we're willing to just get one day. Yeah. It's, it's notice because why not? Yeah. Um, and so uh, this has been our best month ever. We've made almost $6,000 this, this month. This is a high season. I mean, this is like our summer season because we had 27 nights booked. Woo! Which is, I want every month to be like that. Which is great. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and so here's a good example of, uh, you know, Airbnb. So we had a renter who was wanting to rent with his family for uh, four nights, and he had a million questions. You Just know, like a paragraph of question after question. And then and then I'd answer those, and then he would ask more, <laughs> and he was very specific. And, and then he admitted the problem was is the first time he stayed at an Airbnb. This Before would, this, yeah. That was his first time, and yeah. This was going to be his second time. He had a really bad experience because right. he said that the person did not properly set the right expectations, yes. which is what we always talk about. Yes. You know? He thought he was getting a private home for his family. It turned out to be like just like kind a of, carriage house. It's behind the house and it wasn't very private. Right. And it was dirty and just <laughs> all these things. So he was really like making sure he asked the right its questions. Uh, and he asked a lot of them, right. and we were able to answer them yeah. all. So, uh, and so it was great. He he had a good experience, but uh, you know, it's kind of like our other thing we do is we sell things on eBay right. uh, that we find, and um, it's just like on eBay, a bad uh, it, it seller can uh, ruin the experience for everybody else, you know? right? For the rest of their time, it's like if you have a if you buy something for the first time on eBay and you have a bad experience, you're like. Forget it. I'm not going to do that again. Right. So I'm glad he came back to Airbnb. But the thing about people like that who ask like all these questions, we're like, we need to make sure we meet this person. Right. Because we want them to have a personal experience and not have them feel like this is just some like hotel or something. So they had a great time. The whole family. Like yeah. I, I love people when they have kids, when they leave, they're like, our kids think like, this is going to be a regular <laughs> like we, like, vacation home. I hope it is. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah. You know? These kids get like an experience that right. they don't get at home. One thing he was having a problem with, though, and the good thing was he told me this privately instead of writing it in On his... On the review. It, and that's because, like we talked about it last time, I always reach out to people right after they check out to touch base so they tell me anything... Right. Instead of them just bottling it up and then just letting it out in the in uh, the review interview, yeah. <laughs> so it's what he said was is that he was getting late night drunk phone calls on our house phone. We have a landline, and we had never even thought of that before that that could be a problem. I mean, you know, if you don't have a landline and you just have a cell phone, you're not think like right. basically, honestly, my phone's on silent from ten o'clock on anyway. But, well, well, you know, so we have to have a phone in the house because 
there's bad the cell, cell reception, uh, service yeah. there. A lot of people do phone calls through the uh, Wi-Fi, but right. some people don't. And so we have a phone there. And so we didn't think about this, um, that maybe people that had stayed there in the past were uh, using the phone and maybe this is like an old boyfriend from or something. someone and they yeah and so you know and we saw what the number was and we uh, looked it up and it's kind of like an area kind of close close by. by like look we have it's a google voice number so you can block that number right so i saw the incoming number <laughs> and you they actually left a message through google voice that's the only way you can and it was like this crazy drunk message and i was like oh i'm blocking this number forever. yeah um i think it was a wrong number you because think? they called like again? a year ago, uh-huh. and you're like, and then they called again. Yeah, so you're like, yeah. this is a, like someone's drunk dialing. But then I didn't think, oh yeah, and this is just a phone number, so maybe there's going to be like telemarketers. So right. what? It, so it's what I do now is that I put the, I turn off the a uh, ringer, and I always just tell people, turn the ringer. Here's back on. The, here's the phone. If you can call out, if you expect a phone call to come, because people can call them. Yeah. You just need to turn the yeah. uh, ringer on. Because this guy was saying this guy's calling at like one in the morning. Right. <sighs> That's very yeah. disruptive right. to a family. You know, I didn't even think of that. To like anybody. Oh my god. So we, so we apologized and we said we blocked the number. We turned the ringer off. Thank you for telling us. How else would we have known? You right. Know? And then we'll. And we are we don't want to be you know specific about people, but I, I think it's good for people that rent other hosts for us to kind of talk about the kind of people that can stay. Yeah, we had another family come and stay, and it was a mom and dad and two young kids. Yeah, and they were pretty young. With one was three, three one was probably five. And they had two dogs too, <laughs> yeah. but you know it's it's interesting. We don't have children, but we you know it's interesting that people that do have kids how it's can be so different. You know, like there's some kids. There was a couple here a couple right. weeks ago that we met, and they had the sweetest little daughter. She was adorable. She was quiet. <laughs> Her and I were kind of playing in yeah. the kitchen while the parents were upstairs, and she just liked me and was. Right. We were like playing with little toys and stuff, and it was great. On the other side of it... These kids were cute, but they were really rambunctious. Like, they were into everything, and they were like... Like, they were... We have, like, a little toy chest, and just toys were all over the yard. Within, like, five minutes of them being Inside the house, and actually... Uh, we had to go over there halfway through because they said the TV wasn't working anymore. We have Apple TV, and it's because the kids were just touching... Pressing every button. Yeah. On and, the TV right. and on the thing. So, like, the input setting was all messed up yeah. on the TV. I'm like, somebody touch this because we just tested it yesterday. Right. You know? If you were nicer about it. Oh, I was, yeah. I, like, I know how to, I babysat so many times in my right. life that I know how to be like, your kids are crazy. I'm going to be really nice right. about it, you know? So... Uh, you know, that's just the way it is. So we're, we're very child friendly. We like dogs, all those things. And so, but I think what's interesting is when you see people and we've talked about this before where you can just see that their life is like this chaos, you know, where you're like the mom can barely contain the children. Like she's like frazzled and you're just like hoping your house comes out like <laughs> you know what i mean it like i'm afraid to come it wasn't quite that bad but yeah I, I i hear you it's just like it's just a much different kind of environment right, right. to go into i think know? what's weird too uh, on the other perspective of us owning a house that people are inhabiting it's weird to see those people in your house yeah. you know <laughs> that, that that is interesting because if we do meet uh, most people that come and stay at our place you, you kind of see how the different kinds of people inhabit right the, the same the space. exact space exactly sometimes it's a very calm and meditative space yeah sometimes it's like heavy into cooking like right. cooking is the big part just, of the whole stay yeah. sometimes it's just like they're out just in the county hiking and on the river. It's like river, the house is barely touched. Barely even there. Sometimes it's like people are just there and they're just like watching its Netflix. Like, <laughs> you know, it just becomes like, I just want to stay in the AC and watch it Netflix right. and chill. Right, you know? right. Uh, it, it is funny to, or I'm going to a wedding, like the ironing uh, board is like in the hallway. Right. There's like, the linens are everywhere. Right. There's towels everywhere. There's dusty makeup. You're like, yeah. What? 
if these walls could tell a story. <laughs> really? But what's interesting is you're like so much happens every yeah. week in this house that we never see. But that's a kind of uh, but I think if you want to be a host, you have to enjoy yeah, that. Yeah. Like uh, we only like to tell these stories because we like to hear other people's stories, you right. know. It's not about like like a razzing on people. Right, it's just right. like, how do you handle the different kinds of people that come and stay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and now we have, we call it the River House. Because it's near the river. Uh, this <laughs> a second place that we're slowly renovating. Um, so yes. uh, Ryan's uh, sister came in town. She's your younger sister. Yes. You guys were like two a little teenage girls. I don't know why you say that. Giggling. Giggling. And, <laughs> no, you just really a, a like each other. But she's very, we like her because she's just like an outside set of eyes. Yes. And she's kind of a designer. She's kind of like an interior space designer. She doesn't do it for a living, but I think she is a good, um, yeah. you know, it's just innate she has an instinct. Of, instinct for it. Yeah. So she came over to this house that we're, we want to is renovate. And she gave us these incredibly good ideas. And what was good about it was we spent enough time there just kind of hashing out ideas. And when I mean hashing it out because we were like, you know, like you guys were getting pretty passionate about the kitchen. But what was interesting about an <laughs> <laughs> outside set of eyes is that they can think of things that you've not thought of because you've already thought of this other thing. So you've kind of like put this other thing out of your mind. Basically, just if you picture it in your mind, it's like an alpine, a loft. Kind of A-frame type deal. Cabin, yeah. almost, you know. Yeah. It's a small house. Right. But it's like if you think of like a ski lodge. Right. With like an opened, like a... Uh, a loft upstairs right. with stairs going up to it. And, and like then, a banister so you can see up there. And just like a huge front a window on the A-frame, you know, 30 foot high, yeah. a ceiling, and then just like an open downstairs. space downstairs. Yeah. So it's just like an open space. And so what we're trying to, to solve is this house has to be more than for two people. Because if it's only for two people, we can only charge a certain amount. Right. It's... It's too big for just two people, but it's not private enough if you wanted to bring like another couple. You right, know? like two couples or uh, parents with kids. Just there's there's no smart way of the way it's broken up. It's right. just like one. It's honestly the house is one big open space. Right. Uh, so we were thinking, you know, how do we create? I mean, I didn't even think we could put another bedroom in. I was just thinking, how do we create kind of like. A nook. A nook so people could sleep there and have some amount of privacy. Well, she helped us think of, like, where we could actually put a bedroom. Like, right. There's now a place, and we're going to – I'm sure when we're actually uh, renovating, we'll put all these pictures up. So she f helped us think of where we could put a small – Second like, bedroom. 10 by 10 bedroom. And it's big enough that you could fit a good-sized bed in it. It's right. not like a bunk bed type deal. And she also showed us how we could put the stairs in a different place. Yes. I mean – assumptions that I never really thought I could question put them in yeah. a place so then we gain all this other space I will take credit for initially saying that I wanted the stairs in this other spot oh, okay. I, I remember standing there saying what if we put the stairs there and then she was like this is how you could right. do it you would do it like this nice um, but the fact that she was there right. was making me think of right. where things could go now one thing that I think we're gonna do even though she doesn't think it's a good idea you know again when if you're standing there there's a you know a frame and there's just windows going all the way up so it's all this glorious light but we're actually going to make the loft to a second floor so right. we're gonna cut off right that view so it's not gonna be a 30 foot ceiling it's still going to be nice. You'll still be able to see the mountains from the first floor. But when you go into the second floor, it's going to be more of a private bedroom. Sweet. It's a, a much suite. bigger. And know? there'll still be a nice tall A-frame a window yeah. for them. But now you're creating different spaces. And then the most important thing is then we can actually have two couples come and stay. Right. And you can charge more. And I will say this in the long run. Now, this is not on, you know, any radar right now. But if you sell the house, you have two bedrooms, proper bedrooms right. with doors. And we're going to add a bathroom upstairs. Bath so, bath. so it's so, two bedroom, two bath in right. a thousand square foot, yeah. 900 square foot 1. house. 1.5 bath. 1.5, yes. Yeah. One and a half bath. So that was 
really, really helpful. And, you know, like, if you are redoing a space and you have a friend who's a designer or pay a designer, I think it's very helpful to have. And one of my friends came over uh, a couple weeks ago and, and was looking at it and gave us an amazing idea for the bathroom to relay out the bathroom. Right. And at first I was like, no. And then I told Jay about it and he was like, That's a cool we girl. should absolutely do it just like that. I'm like, okay, yeah. great. I'm so glad she stopped by because <laughs> now it like saves us all this time yeah. and money. So I think it's good to get us. And I think it's also good to push back on ideas because there are a lot of ideas where we're like, we want to do this. And she's like, nope. And I'm like, we're still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So that was good. That was great. Um, oh yeah. And then it's just some, something random here. Uh, it's Michael who actually has a, uh, he rents a, uh, a cabin or a house kind of in our area, in our area that, yep. uh, he, he listened to the podcast and he actually sent a link to this, uh, blog post where these people are advertising a rental and part <laughs> of the it's like the the thing about the a rental is that it's a poke stop or it's right above a pokey stop a pokey stop on pokemon go that <laughs> game that everyone's playing so, that's so funny so, so they're they trying to have... <laughs> so they're trying to make that as part of like why EG should rent here is because it's above a pokey, pokey stop, stop. So, just so silly. So those of you who don't know, so you can capture Pokemons. Pokemons. That's so silly. Okay, so let's talk about numbers. Jay. Okay, so since we did the uh, last podcast, we've only booked three more nights. Because so, a lot of stuff's booked right now Because already. the summertime's booked. So August, we have 24 nights booked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is great. So another full... Uh, there's only kind of two little spaces... That could be a uh, rented. So I think we could rent another three nights. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know. Hopefully we do. Yeah. But you know, there's, know. I mean, people always know this about orphan nights. I mean, sometimes yeah. that, that just happens where the uh, reservations happen. And if you don't if you want to do a single night, which we don't, there's just there's some a nights. Couple that, nights. Like someone will book, you know, this night and then there's a day in between and someone books another night and right. they're like, what can you but do? the good news is that those three nights were booked in September, and so September is already starting to get booked up. Oh, uh, yay. You know, uh, the uh, weekends are filling up, and then I'm hoping the the weeks, you know, uh, the uh, uh, weekdays yeah. book up. Uh, so out of two – in 2016, out of 365 days, uh, nights, we have 181 days or nights booked. And we want 200, as uh, and, we always and say. And 200. So, and we still have all of fall, like, for, fall is, yeah. for lots of of uh, rentals. So we're, I think we're easily going to hit 200. So yeah. we'll see how many And more fall we is a good time for us. People definitely still rent our place then. It's, it's good, but it starts to become more like weekendy stays and less like people stay during the week. Uh, right, Just right. because people are back in school, kids are back in school, right. you know, people are working more because yeah. it's not holiday. But we'll see. Okay, so what did renters leave behind? Well, we haven't seen very much because the cl the cleaner is <laughs> over there. We're not over there. I, told, I don't know if she's throwing stuff away. Yeah, I told the cleaner, like, if there's anything in the fridge, leave it there and I'll clean it out. You because, did tell You yep. did tell her? But I don't know if she's like, yeah, throwing it away or taking it. But she's so like, far, uh, or she just cleans it, you know. We need to keep our <laughs> podcast name true. Shampoo and booze. Yeah. Don't take my booze, lady. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how we're gonna work that, but I guess it's uh, up for the taking. Okay, you can always call our voicemail line. Uh, the phone number is. 540-407-8486 and you can leave a question or a comment and we have one phone call. Hi, Jay and Ryan. This is uh, Mr. Atari Colin from Fresno, California and I had a question regarding your Airbnb and I'm considering taking the plunge and investing in some property. I'm in Central California, and, and we're near Yosemite. And the thing about the Yosemite area is that there's a number of things there that people want to do, but, you know, they all involve driving. And my question to you is, um, what do you think about or have you ever heard about um, buying a car 
and having a car available as an amenity. Um, you know, if you're talking about putting in a $12,000 driveway, you know, what's the big deal with a, you know, maybe a, a used car at four grand or something? Um, do you know of any other Airbnbers that do that? Um, I just think it'd be really awesome to be able to, you know, fly into the area and, um, you know, grab a, grab an Uber or something to the Airbnb, but then having a car, you know, there kind of waiting for you. Um, what are your thoughts? Hello, Mr. Atari. That is a great question. I mean, me personally, if we were to, to rent a place that was kind of more in a, a remote area, I would love to have a car. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean... We actually kind of thought about that when we first were thinking about our place. Yeah. You know, thinking, huh, what if we had international guests that flew into its DC? Right. Yeah, took a train... And they can get kind of, close. kind of close. And then what if we had a car that people could... Like we would could... pick them up and then they would have a car. I I mean, I just think... I don't know. Number one is it adds a lot more cost to you if you have to keep this car fixed up. And insured. And you have to figure out about insurance, you know, yeah. about how to make sure insurance is totally covered. Right. Um, I, do th- I do think it's a really cool idea. I think it's a cool thing you could charge for extra as an amenity Mm, you know what i mean like it's not a car rental service per se but you're like like for an extra it's 50 bucks a day right you'll have access to a car with full insurance right and part no part of it uh i think we are thinking uh if the train ever came to our area it would be awesome for people who came down from new york to be able to have a car available so that's like a but it's funny when you said that. I'm like, don't most people drive to your area? But it would be cool if someone, if you're in Central California, someone from LA just hops on a plane, goes to your area, and has a car available. So this is so this is the way I'm thinking, though. I mean, as cool as it is, I think let people figure that stuff out. Themselves. Like, let them figure out how to rent a car in your area. Because yeah. it's like you know. You should be in the I'm renting you a house business, not I'm renting you a car business. Right. In my opinion. Right. It's kind of like when, again, when we first started thinking about doing our first rental, I was like, huh, we should put a computer in there because <laughs> so people can get on the internet. And now it's like, that's the stupidest idea. It's like, <laughs> like everybody everyone, has a computer. Everyone has their own computer. Well, they like, have their phone. Yeah, I mean, like, they do we don't everything need to, on their phone. So I just think. <laughs> And so I think a car falls in that same thing. It like, would be so cool to like give people iPads, but like let them figure it out they that have stuff out themselves. Yeah, yeah that's a, interesting. A car as well. Yeah. First, get the house, fix it up, get that to work, and let people figure out how they're going to get there. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe you could work with a local rental car company if there is one, right? And then give people that info right. of how to uh, rent that car, and if you want to go and drop them off so they can get the car, that's cool yeah, too. yeah. But I do understand that that want to give people that amenity. Cool. Thanks for the call. Okay, that's it for the podcast. You can check out the blog at shampooandbooze dot com. Again, that is our blog. For the links we discuss and to join the conversation. Uh, again, you can leave a question or a comment on something you heard. Um, the phone number is 540 407 8486. We post an episode every Monday morning. You can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube so you always get the latest episode. And you can listen to our other podcast where we talk about where we sell stuff that we scavenge to fund our renovations. And that's at scavengerlife.com. Bye. See ya.